Um, so yeah, at that point I wished to establish about, um, you observe how one person will talk about you to someone else, but you're connected to them because of work, uh, workplace relationships. So, um, it is, it's equally important to me not to have people saying, well, I think, I don't, cause I don't think a person can live life probably with regrets. And I want to say that I regret my whole career in healthcare, but I do think you can definitely make mistakes and I consider the career to have been the career path now to have definitely been a mistake. Uh, simple things I was just wasn't allowed were uh, to include essentially, um, and you know, I'd interviewed and spoke to enough people who, who were seniors in, the, in their careers in pharmacy saying, you know, and they're looking at me with, you know, their teeth in whatever state they're in and going, well, we're old fogies. Sometimes I wish I learned to play the piano. Um, just going, okay, fuck, like, I get the point of this um, moment in my life. It's supposed to help me remember what I got, uh, what subjects I naturally seem to excel in in school and get my best grades in and why I've always felt that I had ongoing drives to continue uh, and determinations to continue to um, create in those, <clears throat> um, you know, in tune with, in tune with those subjects, um, whether it would, would be, you know, um, comedic segments, interviews, parodies, satires, jokes, filming joke, little jokes, um, something with very serious themes. Well, I was just um, wanting to do that, but I was not sure about whether music work with video clips as w in addition to a book would be, would be the best way to do that and because I was committed to the work that I was doing in healthcare, they can't they they could never turn around and say, Oh, the reason your you know, job opportunities didn't progress is because you have all these other issues, um, sorry, interests side interests in um you know, you've got your writing and your da 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 because it it obviously um if you're thinking in those terms, it, it obviously happened the other way around where, um, you know, I'm looking at the pharmacy career going, well, what the fuck next? You know, uh, should I memorize all of America's different brands for Panadol? Oh, they're calling it acetaminophen. They're not paracetamol. Oh, wow. Uh, what next pharmacy? I mean, it has it, it. It truly has gotten to the point where I, uh, I started to think it would definitely be more interesting if I had a terminal illness because I would then see a different aspect of, like a different aspect of pharmacy, um, and it would break with the the uh, mundane, uh, you know, Groundhog Day. Um, uh, every day the fucking same, everyone talks the fucking same in every way, it's the fucking same, um, yeah, and, um, so, you know, with what some people were saying about me, I have close friends, I still am in touch with it, I have been living in Canberra, um, and because of people I was wary of, I was hesitant to disclose that much personal information about my social life, personal life, to even my closest associates in the Capital Chemist group. Uh, but that was because I was just waiting for them to convince me that... Um, the safekeeping of the rights charter mattered or meant something to the management in relation to just the relationship between management and staff. Um, 
because I obviously heard the way that many of them speak about patients and uh, I mean it was enough to offend me that's the thing that's one difference between them and me is that um, when they're uh, uh, offensive it's to the face of another human being one or more uh, when I'm offensive, it's a controlled set, um, you know, it's, um, I'll write in, you know, satirical, um, forms of writing or parodies or I'll, uh, or metaphors to capture and to draw attention to underlying truths, essentially. That's why the greatest artists I've always admired uh, have dealt in reality with their art. Uh, throughout history, my favourite characters seem to be the the ones who... Initially, there was a, an interest I had with scientists who were having to contest and contend with pressures, political pressures from the church in their day, um, many, some of which been told to throw away or recant from their teachings. They would, the church would be calling them your, or your teachings as if, um, Galileo was trying to write a new Bible. Uh, he was just trying to describe, you know, what he was working on with planetary, uh, rotation and the solar system and, you know, um, but the church seemed to always be there to uh, be putting a certain amount of pressure on <clears throat> on scientists or or uh, forcing them to uh, consider themselves a dangerous or corrupting influence on a society that's overseers and overlords were always religious do dogmatists. Um, so that recurring theme in history has always been an interesting one to me. Uh, and also, so too has been those characters who uh, weren't really, they were kind of out, outsiders and loners who didn't, uh, it's not necessarily that they were marginalized or felt completely marginalized by their society. It's, it's, uh, I don't think s descriptions like that are uh, entirely appropriate because I think it misses some. It, it, it sort of misses the point. They might have found there were few, very few people for them to relate to, uh, and their society was. All, it was also difficult to relate to their own society, so their way of trying to deal with the world in which they lived was through expressionism and art and writing. And um, in that respect, the Marquis de Sade is an, an interesting person because he... Um, there's an element of humility in him because if you imagine his time in history where now the printing press is available... Um, your family doesn't have to be so wealthy as to be able to afford a scribe to sit down and hand copy every page of a book that your family wants because now the printing press is out. Uh, and then the Marquis de Sade who was, had some, some sort of, some, um, like he came from a wealthy family. He had, uh, I can't remember the term for him before he started the Libertine movement. But he was, you know, he wasn't lower class, but he did enjoy um, being able to provide literature to uh, the non-upper class. And, you know, I was, I had read about there being cafes where people would gather and take in turns passing a Marquis de Sade book around in a circle. And he was writing all these depraved stories about... Uh, well, it's, you know, if um, if you're that sort of religious thinker, you might even want to call him uh, a prophet to warn us all about people like Cardinal Pell. <laughs> because um, 
yeah, his stories are not a, uh, it's not about him um, teaching moral lessons, of, of course not. Uh, that's the, that's not the, that's not the scope of a, of an artist or a writer's duties to their, uh, to their fellow man, you know. And that's the interesting thing about him is that it's uh, it's almost as if um, deep down he was he would he was hoping that uh, there would start to be um, a rising against and an opposition against uh, the the wide range of injustices that constantly go on because of religious thinkers, um, and without touching on that. Uh, fundamental dividing line that are in, in, in debates and conversations I constantly find myself revisiting which is whether um, it's whether the obliteration of theistic religion is necessary for achieving, actually achieving the goals as far as humanism goes and human relations go, um, that all religions that are, um, you know, are social, uh, try to claim that they're offering society through their religion, like church youth groups or, um, uh, religious ide idealistic groups that think they can save the world and that they, God's, uh, got a special plan for them in their life and, God wants you to join that church and help God and help these people all save the world and da da da. da. Uh, you've heard that all before, um, it, and so um, it's a it's a debate where I keep you, you know you, you spend time reading books by liberal mystics who will say outright, um, no, we don't believe that any sort of supernatural God exists. We don't think there's uh, a God who works on a reward and punishment basis. Um, and if our moral, Albert Einstein said to the words to the effect of if our moral um, intuitions were reliant on um, either the approval of and reward uh, and reward by or the, or the disapproval of and punishment from um, a supernatural god, then it's it, uh, we would be like like dogs, basically. Uh, 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 that, that's not the that's not the correct uh, choice of words that he uses that he used. Um, <clears throat> but that was the point he was trying to illustrate, and that's because um, morality as a as a category, um, if you were to enroll in philosophy, you could prob probably spend, you wouldn't even need to, t you could spend so much time just studying issues of, of, on ethics and morality, you wouldn't need to, you wouldn't have ha have time for uh, theology and whether or not a God exists and, um, you know, is there life after next Thursday? And, um, uh, you know, but um and Sam Harris has spoken in recent years about that paradigm that the that Christian theists and theists of of most kinds especially in all all organized religion and the three Abrahamic monotheistic faith traditions all live by is that essentially it does boil down in their minds to whether or not their god is going to approve and therefore potentially endorse if not reward them or then disapprove and punish them for this or that and the other um, instead of you know uh, it yeah you, if you take that as, as your only framework for understanding morality and apply that to all your relationships and your dealings it's just stupid you are in that with that outlook you're not appreciating other people for things that you're identifying about them instead you're wondering if um God's going to make them burn for all eternity while giving you a pair of wings, while explaining after you die why he made sure you had to meet such these people at this particular time. And you just miss everything. Um, instead, just um, re re rejecting that, that paradigm and 
um, thinking about the good as being that which is enhancing to life, uh, to the well-being and flourishing of conscious creatures, and that which is evil as being that which diminishes um, the welfare and well-being and flourishing of, of conscious creatures as evil. Uh, and Sam Harris argues, and I agree with this argument of his, that um, even at heart, uh, um, and even in terms of their own uh, reductive reasoning, Christians and other theistic evangelists, uh, they even know that what's good or bad has to do with well-being and flourishing as, as the good and, uh, you know, um, the loss of well-being and an impediment to flourishing has been bad. They even know that that's more like what good and bad mean um, because that's how they think of, that's how they will think of their God in, in, their, in their own minds. You know, they'll, uh, they'll be thinking, is, is what's my God's well state uh, well-being like? because of how I'm living my life today. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and then, uh, and then at the same time, uh, well, on the other hand, um, questions to, to a Bible-believing Christian. Um, you can say, are you even able to give me a single definition of what is meant by the word good or the word evil? Um, that it is applicable to every conceivable circumstance or more circumstances than is applicable in the secular world or in the unbelieving community. Um, because other, you can come forward with wacky, uh, ab 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 abhorrent um, and horrific propositions and concepts like, um, you know, in the, in the Old Testament of the Christian's Bible, God says, if a man meets a virgin who has not been pledged to be married and he rapes her, he must pay her father 50 shekels of silver and then he must marry the girl and he can never divorce her as long as he lives because he has violated her. So the Christians have that written in their Old Testament. Um, so long as the Christians are saying God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Jesus died to fulfill the scriptures. Uh, every Jesus said every jot and tittle of the law must be upheld. Um, if someone left a Christian church and went off and found an unpledged girl today uh, and raped her and then went up to her father with 50 pieces of silver, uh, according to everything his church would have taught him he could always be saying but but you you, uh, you you said that this was good and i think i thought god was telling me it was good as well i prayed about it a lot like i know it's in your bible lord but do you do you really want me to to rape like shouldn't i rape someone some you know uh older a bit and maybe a bit stronger and you know yeah uh, all those so in anyway I'm not the biggest fan of uh, the agendas of, of churches. So anyway, um, yeah, but to, to avoid, if you, you know, if you don't want to be doing direct um, quote pulling from uh, from the Old Testament, there's always a web, good website, though, on that topic called theevilbible.com. Uh, and it, the uh, people who created that website have, systematically categorized different types of evil that is uh, represented in the Bible as um, part of uh, you know part of the, part of the, uh, the the Christian God or the God of the Abrahamic faiths um, uh, vision for our little planet um, so evilbible.com is an interesting site to learn more on that topic. But yeah, if you if you were to approach a sure try it on liberals, try it on fundamentalists, if they're um, whatever the type of monotheist they are, you can just say, well, is your is your deity said to be all powerful, all loving, and all knowing? 
as just three rudimentary initial check questions. And if they say yes, then you can actually, um, you can go so f in plenty of different directions in, um, in discussions then, then, which include like, they can be stumped by simple questions like what, what is meant by good? Uh, that is a consistent definition of the word good because, um, Uh, unless they're fucking the head, a Christian apologist won't say, um, well, sometimes rape is just part of um, how things have to be because of God's plan, but God will uh, make up for it later. Um, he'll make, he'll, you know, if someone's raped, maybe they're later they'll get a rape horn and um, they can sprinkle some holy water on the rape horn, you know, because... Because it all, it's all part of God's plan. Um, yeah, so I've spent years just uh, studying these sorts of, of topics and debating metaphysics and epistemology on forums. Um, and because there are universal or more or less universal things that can be said about um, the God of you know, monotheistic, faith traditions, then Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, their God concepts uh, stand relevant to this, to many of the same criticisms that can be, in in principle, launched at Christianity. Um, so long, it depends, it, it just depends on the properties and attributes that are inherent to the concept of the God that the religion is um, worshipping and you know that they, they stand for. I uh, will be back. Yeah.